Hi hey guys, it's Rachel here. As you can see, I got some new Arteza products. Um, so I thought I'd show you what I got. Um, I had wa I had wanted the gouache colours, um, but they're out of stock. So I got the real brush pens and they're blendable water-based inks. So I'll show you those first. I have actually opened these and tried them out because um, I needed to see how they worked and everything um, and so they are fantastic and look at the super cool trays they're in other I mean you could put them in a jar or something but they store away in these trays and they come with one of the refillable um, water brushes um, so I'll just show you the colors really really nice so we're going to have a play with those afterwards um, I'll show you the sorts of things that I did and how how they work um, and then, um, so I'll just leave those out of their box. I got also this, um, the four different brushes. So we'll have a look at those. I haven't opened that yet. They have the best products. I really like their products. And, you know, I, I mean, I'm not an artist in the sense, like I'm not a painter, so I don't, I can't compare them to other um you know brands or anything like that but for someone um like anyone who's like me and not a professional um i think they're great products so they're all different sizes and what you do is you unscrew them here and you put water in them oh it's the other way i always want to do it the wrong way so you, you put water in there it's quite easy to get the water in there um, and so they're all different sizes. That's a fine one. So the one that's in there is, is, I think it might be this one here. It's a bigger one. And then, yeah, so all the different sizes. And then um, I also got this. These, I wanted these the last time. They are those gorgeous um, linen covered um, books. Now that I'll tell you about them in a second. Let's just open it. And I know Maremi Art Supplies is using them. And I may, um, when I build up the courage, I may, um, and you get three in the pack, which is a great deal. I may um, try one of her projects. She's a bit advanced for me, but um, yeah. So cold pressed, dual sided, acid free, natural linen bound, um, ideal for watercolor and mixed media. So this is, it's lovely, oh, lovely, 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 pa lovely paper. Yeah. So they're really great. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll take that off there. Um, so, yes. So I don't know if I'll play in this. I, I, I don't want to ruin it. So, um, but I might in another video play with this. I might won't in this video. So that's those. Absolutely love those. And look how big they are. But I'd like to um, sort of learn to do some doodling and that sort of thing. And I had asked for these in the hope of getting the gouache. These are those wonderful trays where you if you have tubed um, watercolor or gouache you um, squirt them in there and then they dry you can leave them to dry so you don't waste anything and then you reactivate them with water so eventually I'll get the gua some gouache and, and that's what I will be using it for um, because I've got some watercolors but they I've got Windsor and Newton watercolors but um, they're not in tubes they are I can't open it I wanted to open it. My hands are cold. That's what the problem is. Oh, I'm going to have to rip the box. I won't keep it in the box anyway. Um, but I'm very excited to have one of these. It's just I don't have anything to put in it at the moment. I wanted to show you. Oh, it's metal. I think Maremi has one of these as well. She's a much better person to show this stuff because she's an actual artist, not like me. But, you know, you've got to have the stuff. Okay, so this is the box. We'll get rid of it. We don't need that. Um, 48 empty half pans. Now, if I can stop being a ding-dong and I, I see. Oh, so cool. Oh, look at that. See? And you can mix your colours and you put them all in there. And they even, I think they come out. I'm pretty sure they come out. Oh, I see. You've got to move that. And they then they do come out. But how cool is that? I love it. That even comes out. Oh, see, they do come out. I thought they did. They've got a little clip holding them in. So, yeah, so that's really cool. That's going to be fun. So if you had tubed paints and you just tube them all in there and then you mix your colours here and here, 
that's fabulous and really nice thing to travel with i think too so i love that um yeah so i'll just take this away oh no the other thing i got which i'm really excited about is oh steffi was excited about this oops i think he's going to take it it's the architecture triangular scale rule um it has all measurements so it's got inches and centimeters um and it's really cool because it protects your hand too if you're using a um, knife you know a stanley knife so i'll just get it out very happy to have one of these oh and it's nice and light and it's metal and also you can grip here so you hold it down and you cut with your knife and because your hand's up in the air you don't risk slipping and cutting yourself so that's what i was thinking that was good for um, and it's got all the different types of measurements so i thought that was really fun so i think steph's going to steal that because he he was very excited to see that so i'll just take away my piece of linen um and i wanted to show you um a few things my first messy things i'm not going to be embarrassed or anything i'll just show you the messy things that i did um because i'm not a painter as you know so i've got some mixed media paper i'll just tell you about what paper i've got um it's not arteza or is it no it's fabriano we just buy it at our supermarket here it's um 250 gm or 135 pounds acid free and it's mixed media paper so um yeah and so i'll show you i just started off by playing around with the colors now all i did here was um isn't that beautiful that that is a beautiful yellow um i just started by um i just colored it in and then i wet it and i made a big pool of paint and then i took the paint and i went over there so maybe we'll have a go at doing that let's do that before we do anything else just so you can see um i've got other things on the go to show you because i i did have a play around with it um before because of course i haven't used them before so um i needed to get a feel for them um i do have some it's water in here um and yep there's still it's lasted me quite a long time all the mucking around i've been doing is been with one fill of water so i don't know i'll just grab any color will i um about let me see if there's a color i haven't used mm, maybe we'll go here. well let's go to here to the purples i haven't done many purples maybe we'll try that one a bluey purple well, maybe i have used it i don't know so i'll just show you here i don't know if you can see it's an actual brush can you see how it separates so this is kind of um i'll just do a little so it goes on a bit like a, a texture, like a marker. But you could, I mean, if you're a calligraphy person, I can't do calligraphy. But if you are, if you do do calligraphy, then these are great for that as well because they're brush pens. It's it's a soft nib. I'll just show you. Look, it's soft, and it separates. It's got hairs because it's um, it's a you know, it's a brush. There we go. So basically, all I did with this is I just gave it a squeeze. And a blob of water came down and I got a big pool of um, water here and I just activate it and it becomes like a watercolor. And you can do your shape a little bit bigger. See how water it goes? And then I took some color over here. So you see you can get even the light colors. So I was thinking if you wanted to have really pale colors like this, um, what I would do is do that on another page and then use it over here but the more you sort of um play around with it and maybe i can do some more over here and go even paler take some off here i don't know but isn't it cool it's really cool and, you, and the more you brush it the more any sort of brush strokes that you had going on there um they kind of start to disappear I can put a bit more color in this one maybe and i think um actually we could try i do have a um a, a little um cup of water um here just so uh i can clean my brush so what i wanted to do was like for example if i clean my brush and then come over here and take some from here i can do even paler over here you see so you can get your shading 
just from one amount for that. So I can take a bit more from there and put a bit more in there, make it a bit darker. So be, to get to that, I, I cleaned my brush to get to that point there. So that's just to show you, give you an idea how they are working. I was also thinking, so if you didn't want um, a darker colour, you wanted a really light colour, you would have it on a different piece of paper and then work on your page that you're working on. Um, and then I was wondering as well, could I... Now, I've watched no videos how these work, and Artesia, Artesia could faint when they see what I do. But could I colour in over here? I was thinking. I'd have to colour in quite a bit, wouldn't I? And then could I take it over here as a watercolour? I think mm, I can. See? And then if I want more water I can or I can dip it in the water I can do a little dribble down there see I've got a bit more water there and you can do things I've probably got the wrong brush for this sort of thing but just to give you an idea so this is a nice way to be able to use these so you don't have don't, you don't have to actually color in I mean that's a terrible shape but anyway you know what I mean just having mucking around having a play with the product sort of thing. So that's what I was thinking that you could do. And then when that's dry, you could come in with one of these pens. Um, this wouldn't, you'd, you can you can um, go over with a biro and then go over with water and nothing will happen, but these would run. Um, you, need, you need a pen that won't run, but if it's dry, you can then go over with one of these pens and do some details. So that's another thought um, that I thought you could do is you could mix some colour over here and then paint. like So you're using it like a watercolour. And then that way, you like if I wanted to mix that, just say I wanted to mix that, oh, I haven't washed my brush, just say I wanted to mix that with this. I'd put some pink there, this pinky colour. What's it called? They've got the names on the thing, I think. Rouge pink, that one. Um, so yeah, you can, um, I don't need to wash my brush, but you can mix your colors as well. So here we go. We've got, per you can, you can have, look at that. I've got a purpley pink, uh, a bluey pink. Terrible, terrible leaves. But I thought that's fun and, and you can create backgrounds and things like that. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's how I, the different ways I thought that you could use it. Um, and then I wanted to show you another project that I did. Uh, so this was, the, that was my first bodgy page, but I thought, um, these are really, like, it'd be really nice, like, maybe not in bright pink, um, but I like those colours, but they wouldn't fit in with what I'm doing, but all these pale colours here, um, to even have a page just with that all bleeding into each other, and then, um, get your die cuts or do drawings over them like that, and then cut them out and use them in your work. Or you could get your die cuts and cut leaves out or shapes out or whatever you like. And then, but have these lovely watercolor backgrounds. I thought that would be really cool. And then stamp on them and all kinds of things could happen. Um, and then I just wanted to show, isn't that yummy? I love it. Um, and then the next thing um, that I did was, where's my next thing? Oh, I did this. This is just, I, I, I just played around here with some colors here I, I did color in on the page and then I um, but I, I didn't fill it in straight all the way so for example let's take um, sorry so basically what I did here was I had my um, I took my pen no I drew I drew that onto my shape that's what I did I, I just did shapes but I, I didn't that's a bit brownie but I sort of didn't color them in all the way I just went like that maybe a bit more and then oops I've opened it got my water on here I mean there's lots of experimenting that you can do with these and I just sort of painted my shape I had in this one I had more color around the edge um, than I do in this one And then when it was dry, I went over it with a pen. And um, so 
let's try again here. So you don't need to worry about it sort of colouring in all the way because um, you're you're going to be water making it become watercolour. You're going to activate it with water. So I've got my darker edges. And then you can put some, oops, that's a lot of water. So I've got way too much water, so I just take some off. I've got a towel near me. Um, my friend taught me that. So I can move my water around. I can have a lighter shape down there. I mean, you could do balloons like that. That was, in, I just watched a video by CC, is it CC Creations or Creations by CC or something like that. I'll link her channel down below because I did do a few things inspired by her. Um, see, see the nice shading that you can get and then you can, you can wait till that's dry like you would with watercolour and then you can come back and put more on. You can come back and get, put more colour on if you wanted to. And then you can just play with shapes and then do drawings over them and that sort of thing. So that's another idea. But see, look at the nice shading that happened on there. Um, yeah, I like that. That makes me happy. So it's just having the time to be able to, you know, develop these sorts of ideas. And then the next thing I did was I... I've just got to grab it over here. I did have another idea, but I can't remember what it was. That's no help, is it? I divided my page up like this, in, just into rectangles. No, no particular. I think it's three and a half inches by three inches or a bit less than three inches. And they're not even all the same. It doesn't really matter. And this is inspired by CC Creations. And so I did this. And she did this. And I've seen other people have done it from her as well. So basically, I took three colours. One, two, that's one colour, that colour, and then the green. Um, the acidy green and what I did was in one um, of one of each color in different rows in theory I um although those look fairly similar and so do those because I didn't manage it very well but um, I did darker medium and lighter and I did it by um, the lighter I did the darker and then for the lighter I, I put quite a bit of water in it and I took the color over like I showed you in the first example and then, and then similar for the medium, I took, first I took a little bit for the medium and then I think I took some from the medium for the light or something like that. And then when they dried, I just did um, some doodles on, on them. And um, I just did that with this Uniball air pen. So I like this pen. These ones um, for me are no good because I'm being, the way I write, they're good for other people. The, and, and also these ones, um, you know, the pigment liners. But the way I write, because they've got the felt tip, um, they get an angle on them, and then they they don't they're scratchy. They don't write for me. Whereas this one, had look at look at the point it has on it. That one's really good. So um, yeah, so that one works really well for me. So basically, yeah, I just chose three colors that I liked, and um, and just did this sample. And and CC does a lot of these, so I'll link her channel. I'll link actually link the. Maybe I can't remember what video I watched. She does many of them. So I'll just link her channel so you can see. Um, and so, yep, I just divided it up and maybe we'll do one colour. And I'll just show you how I, if I can remember, how I got the effect. Um, what colour will we do? So we've got some nice brownie sort of colours. I'd like to see what colour this one is. This one says, what colour does it say? It says um, chamomile. So let's try this. So I'm going to put my, this one won't go very dark, but isn't it a beautiful colour? I love that colour. So I'm going to, uh, with the darker one, I did colour it all in. So you just do this funny sort of rounded rectangle oval sort of shape in your square, in your rectangle. It's not a square. And just, I just coloured it in. Oh, I know what I did. And then for my um, sort of medium colour, I just had, I had less. I didn't colour it all in. I think that's what I did. So I had a bit here and there, a bit of scribble like that. So let's just get going with it. So this, I uh, just squeezed a little bit of colour in there and just watercolour it.
and then if you want to mix your own colors as I mentioned you could color in on the on your palette on your plate or what or your if you've got a like a plasticky sort of palette then you would color it in and then down here we want this to be medium so a bit too much water there might be my light might not have put enough color in so it's all new for me too just playing around with these so this is going to be my light I think it's a bit light see it See, as you colour them in, the lines go away, and then when it dries, it's all good. So I think that might be my light colour. It was going to be my medium, but I didn't put enough colour in there, and too much water. I just like laying down colour, it's fun. So that's what I did there. And then we've got to get our medium colour going. And that would, in theory, would be up here. But I kind of messed it up on my other one. So let's do that again. And just colour it in a little bit more than I did that one. But not wholly. Okay. And take some water from over there. Maybe just a tiny drop. Oh, there it is. There you go, one drop. And in theory, this one, I think I'm getting a bit of blue in there, but from before. So this one will be slightly darker than this one down here. And slightly lighter than that one over there. And I thought this would be a fun thing to do a whole lot of these for me or embroidery and do just a whole lot of different types of markings on them or embroidery ideas I thought would be fun that was my idea it might be the same as that I might need to take some color from over here and can I do that otherwise I'll come back with a bit more color so that's that one and then you go on with your next color and then when they dry you just do your your drawings on top and then, so that's really fun. I'm going to do more, but I can't do any drawing on that until it dries. Um, and then the next um, thing that I thought was really cool, and I saw this from Meditative um, Scrapbooking. This is really cool. You're going to like this. So, uh, and this is really referring to what we girls like to do, the ones of us that aren't painters. Um, so basically, um, Ira... Um, stamped on her paper so i've stamped on the very heavy paper but i might try and stamp on a, a lighter weight mixed media paper um so i just stamped and i use stays on because stays on um as you can see doesn't run um so i stamped on that one's upside down and didn't stamp properly and that one didn't stamp properly um but i could turn the page around where those bits are and stamp something else and and then paint them so i stamped them let them dry and then i just painted painted on them so let's try and do this one so I think I'll start with the green and then I'm going to cut them out or let's cut one out so you can see I'll cut this one out it's kind of hard to cut out a little bit because um because it's very thick paper now what I did was I let the color most go round around the image so that way um when I cut it out I'll have colour and not white, if you know what I mean. Hopefully. There are some places I didn't extend the colour too far beyond the stamped image. But I think that's really lovely to use on tags or if you had it... I think I would like it on a little bit thinner paper if I were to um, put it on like in the corner of a journal page or something. But I don't know how that would fare with all of the water. So, because um, quite a bit of water goes on. Let me cut my stem off. I think they're super cute little embellishments. That have that little personal hand-painted touch. Oops. So 
So this is, of course, something that's quite out of my comfort zone because I don't really do that much painting. I did do a bit of oil painting before I did any other form of crafting, but, you know, I self-taught and I don't consider myself an artist at all. And I, I really can only do basic drawing. But I can certainly muck around. Here we go. So you cut it out. You don't have to cut it out, um, you know, perfectly. And then that will be cute. Be cute little um, addition, you know, to something. Stick it on a little tag or something like that. So that was the idea with those. So I'll just show you how I did one. But you can see the colours are really lovely too when you um, when you use them. So I need some green. Where's my green? Okay, and the nice thing is you can see all the colours in the bottom of at the end of your tray that's towards you. So um, that's also really good. Now this green is called seawood green. I can just read that. So maybe we'll do this one. This one's a little bit less complex. All I, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. I just put the colour down. Put I don't put it everywhere because I want to come along and I want to do a bit of um, sort of shading and stuff i don't know i mean all you artists out there you'll be screaming at me what are you doing that's not how you do it but anyway this is how i'm doing it so i'll go ahead and and blend that out with my wet brush oh and i want to go beyond because when i cut but i might come in and um with another green so i'm not putting too much water because um, I don't. Well, actually, I did try. I did try my um, the the pens where where it was quite wet, and they still worked, but less. So then I might come in with uh, a different something like a bit more of a acidy green. So moss green. This is green tea, and I'll color that in, especially in the parts where I didn't put too much color. And then I'll watercolour those a little bit. This gives you a few different shades. I mean, it's not meant to be, it's a stamp. It's not meant to be that detailed or be perfectly shaded as it would be in reality. And I might even just give my brush a wash and, and then start blending out that colour. And the nice thing is you can go way, you go beyond because you, you want to cut it and you want to have the green there, not the white. So you don't even have to be perfect. You just smoosh it about. If you like smooshing, it's good. Now, anything I'm not happy with, I just keep going over it with water and, until I'm happy with it. so you get a few colors on there and then in the center of the flower I don't know I don't even know what type of flowers these are so um, I was thinking um, maybe a more I might put this darker what's this color called grape purple I'm gonna put a bit of that in the center yeah and just get your brush and got too much water there. There we go. And then I don't want to colour. Oh, do I? I don't think I wanted to colour that all in. I do want to make it. Maybe I'll use this colour. Maybe it will be yellow. it's quite fast Maybe a bit more color and see now this is wet I'm just going to go back in with my well, that one's not going to do it I need a darker color this one 
go with a bit of a darker color it's even though it's wet I'll do it from my I'm gonna do it from my tray oops all oh, my papers are falling down here we go so I put some on my tray that's better there we go You've got a cute, looks, I don't know what it is. Looks like a lily or something. And then I've lost my my centre colour. And I did use that deep black, but I think I might go with, maybe I'm going to change my mind. And put a little bit of a brown in there. No, nope, I need to go on my tray. So if you go in the water, the tip loses its colour, that's all. So you need to go on your tray. So yeah, it is. Even though these are pens, you need to have a little plate with you. There we go. So that is it. So I thought that's super fun. I will be fussing, cutting these, and finishing off those slowly when I have time and inspiration. And I leave those colours there because they dry, and you can um, reactivate them with. Um, water and, and reuse them and you can put another color next to it and mix it and get all kinds of colors more than what you've even got in the, the very generous packet that you get from Arteza. So this is the 48 packet um, of colors and super fun thing to have, super fun thing. Um, something else, oh, I don't know whether I would use them so much on, no, I wouldn't use them on this. I was thinking you could even do a line there and then watercolour it, but these are printed with an inkjet, so I wouldn't do that. I would not do that. But I just want to try one more thing before I sign off. I just wanted to grab this. I know it's printed on regular paper. And so... They are printed on regular paper, so they probably won't appreciate it. I think, no, I think this will just make a mess. Let's just try. I wanted to grab a brown, maybe this type of brown. And I just wanted to see what would happen if I were to put a line of this around the edge. And I were to get this. No, it's not blending. See, it doesn't blend so well on the regular paper. It needs to be on the watercolour paper. See, it's just soaked. In. This is, You know what it is? It's soaked into the paper. And so it's not working. But that was something I wanted to try, but it's not doing it. I thought it could be an easy inky way for someone, but no, that won't work. So there we go. We've tried that. Okay, so yeah, you've got to use it on the, on the, well, this is the mixed media paper. See, this is already nearly dry. And then you do your drawings on there. I don't know, like you can do, just like stem, or maybe I'll, oh, it's a bit wet still. So I'll use my bar. I was going to use the other pen, but I can feel it's a little bit damp. So just do some stems going in different, that bit like what CC does really. And then do little flowers. And I am not a drawer, just little doodle sort of things I can do, but not very well. But I think it's a cute way to sort of put some little ideas I mean that would look super cute embroidered there we go how quick was that so you just go ahead and do all different things and then you have your colors that sort of coordinate together and it's just a nice way to play with color it's relaxing and you could have it like um, little sample cards. You cut them out and have little sample cards and things. I thought that was a bit of fun. So that is my video showing the Arteza products. Um, I hope you enjoy Wouldn't that be cute? Stuck in there. Um, sorry, getting distracted as I always do. Oh, here's the other drawing. It's still a bit damp as well. But here again, I would, you know, you could make it into a little pod like I did. You just do these 
draw a little circle there, semicircle, two little lines coming out, and then I mean, very random stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not going to use this for anything. It's just mucking around. Anyway, um, yep. So those are the really fun products from Arteza that I got. And um, these are really great. And these are also really great to use, um, to have one up ready. And now I've got them um, when you're tearing your napkins. Just dab a little bit of water around it. And, and you're ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, there will be a discount um discount code down below and this is an affiliate um there will be affiliate links um in the description box and um so there's a small percentage that comes to me from any sales from those links um but it doesn't cost any more for you so i hope that makes sense so thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video it's something different and um this is a super cool idea you should go and i'll, I'll link um ira's video um is it ira i think it is um down below and um and that way you can go and watch her super cool video showing how to do that and she also does it with color pencils it's really fun so thank you for watching and i will see you again soon bye